let's just start first of all with chunks. Right. Chunks being the best part of a digital performer, especially when you're writing uh, episodic television, things like that, to make sure that you can have everything in one file. So for those of you who don't use chunks, which is, this is the chunks window here, probably the best feature for film composers in particular in DP. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And that being is that I can create all of these different you know, files, obviously, here. And I can when you go to this window here, you can go through them all. And they can all sync up to the one movie, which is awesome. So if I want to have this, this file here, you know, obviously, I'm working on Q by Q. And then as I go to the next chunk, movie follows along with it. So I'm always in sync. I'm always ready to go, which is awesome. So um, that's probably the one premiere thing that Matt and I, in particular, both love. So I'm going to start here by showing you. So I've created a couple different uh, chunks here to start with. My template chunk, here's kind of where I'll start. And um, I will take every, every cue I write in this film kind of from this. I'll copy this particular chunk and keep going. So that way, I always have the same palette at, at my at my uh, at fingertips. My, at my right. fingertips, exactly. So here's how I create, and, and I'm big on color coding and creating folders. So if you guys do that, that's another great helpful thing. I mean, obviously, look how clean you can make it. You option click it, op everything opens. Option close it. You can move things around. You can move things around. You can do all this great stuff. So it's a really easy, great way to keep your stuff very uh, very organized. Um, what I'll do is I'll have a section of my audio that I record myself. And then when I have live players come in, I make another little folder for them. So therefore, I have both my, my section and his section. So sometimes they'll be replacing files that I do, but I have, of course, my originals there. And then I create a section for audio mixes, a preview mix that I'll send to the client for approval. I also have a mix minus that I create where I take out whatever uh, instrument I'm replacing and just have the kind of foundation mix there. So that way I can shut off all the MIDI and everything and, and just go with just a couple audio tracks. So it really makes things quick as well uh, when I'm in the recording process moving along. And then I have my mix stems folder. And in this folder is where all my, I'm monitoring all my sounds from because I have a, I'm using a separate computer running like V Pro and putting all my sounds in that. So all of it's bust in here. And then I'll go ahead and and just basically, you know, get rid of files I don't need. But th there's a great feature in Digital Performer where you can hide unused tracks. So a great thing is, so I might want to leave open all my stuff here, and then I'll go ahead and hit that command, and it'll just show me the stuff I want. Um, so that's a great, another great feature to hide and show all if you if you want to, so without having to delete them. It'll just hide them, so you can see exactly where you have MIDI or any kind of information in those tracks. So from that point, these all get stemmed out. I, I'll record them all at once, and then I go ahead and I'll export all of those audio files out to my, uh, to my engineer. Or, for example, I'll send some stuff to Matt. So that way, Matt can work from that if he, if he wants to work in audio. Or I can just send him the file. I can literally take this file, and we can go ahead, send it to him, and then he will just load in the chunk. There's a load feature which is awesome in DP2, mm -hmm. where it'll give you all the selection of chunks, and then you can literally pick which ones you want and load them all in. Right. If you go inside um, and you, you want to go from a different project, and you want to go ahead and you want to load in just a chunk from that project, uh, which I do a lot with Matt. So here it is. I can load in. This is looking at that file, and I can load in any one of these things. And when I do, I can, it can, I can have it either load in every sound bite, or I can just the one from that particular chunk. Again, another great feature of why chunks is so awesome mm -hmm. is because you can really just specify just a tiny, yeah. tiny bit. Maybe you can you've also, worked on a you know, show at one point and you're pitching on a new show and you want to use some of the ideas that you had or some yeah. of the template that you were using for something else, you can easily import it into a new session. So exactly. We do that exactly. sort of thing all the time. Yeah. So that's another great feature. Which elements, yeah. Yeah, so yep. I mean, it, it really makes it not only fast and easy, but it's really user friendly. I mean, right. it's basically right there. So. Uh, that's that's how it starts. And then what we'll do is we'll talk about a cue that both of us wrote on in particular. I had created a theme for the show for one of the characters. Matt did, uh, this, this film is called The Samuel Project. It's an indie feature with Hal Linden. And he, uh, so there was like a, there's his, his theme, which is kind of an older, 
he has a, he's an older guy. He's got his set in his ways kind of thing. And then there's his young grandson. Matt kind of focused in on the indie rock version of that. I kind of focused in on the uh, older school version of, of him. And then we merged these things together. And right. in this one cue we did, we had to kind of show both of those. So one, you want to go ahead and talk about Sure. It? And yeah. Joey, this 1M14V1, uh, that was the original version, right? That's yours. Okay. And then this is the one we worked on together. Right, exactly. Yeah, this is the one we worked on together. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, yeah, this cue, for example, yeah. um, as Joey explained, we had a character where he was younger, teenage character, guitarist, and so we had kind of this indie rock vibe going for him. Uh, and then for the older character, this, this more of a Latin uh, vibe. And so we were looking at ways to not only, they each had to have their own themes, but they also sometimes had to merge together. And this is one of those cues where it did that. So I started this cue off using the, the themes and tones that we had created for the, the teenage character. And um, I was at, having a background as a, you know, playing in bands and, and as a guitarist. Um, I kind of handled getting the guitar tones together. So using things like S gear, uh, which I love, and, and guitar rig and, and other uh, guitar virtual plugs like that, I created some sounds that I liked, also using some other plugs that Joey and I both share. And f when I got all the tones together, wrote the cue. We've also got some light textures in here. It's a pretty simple palette for this particular movie, and especially this cue. Um, but we had a couple of synth pads, guitars, uh, a little bit of ride cymbal and kit and then trumpet. And so this is where this cue started. I'll go ahead and play it now. And uh, this is all, this sequence is just MIDI yeah. uh, and, and MIDI audio. So there's no, there's no actual, other than the guitar, which I performed, um, it's the rest of it samples. So here we go. the section with the young boy in it, kind of his thematic stuff, and then it moves over to this section, and this section is where our grandfather comes into play. So I covered this ground on this section. So it was really fun. So Matt basically gave me this beginning ground, and then I just took it from there. Right. And literally took his, his MIDI file and stuff, just threw it into mine and started working from his file, uh, or from his chunk, I should say. And so, uh, the, so then I'll go ahead and start creating my version of it, and of course, I have other things in there from my, like I said, from my palette, which I set up. Matt doesn't need to do that necessarily on his side because I was going to create this cue overall. I was finishing it. So we go into it this way. And so here's the tra his trumpet file, which then I use the quick scribe to just create a simple chart for my live trumpet player to come in. And as you can see, uh, this is now populated with the audio. So I played guitar at the end. So we, he saved stuff like that. Right. And we've used stuff from, you know, a ton of DP stuff, like multi-fuzz, things like that. We've also, uh, so his guitar tones and his, as you can see there, and I literally just plugged those right in. He saved, he saved those out and I threw those right in. And then uh, I go ahead and I've added some other stuff into it. I've played some live shaker. I, I did some more guitar stuff where then I, of course, froze those plugs. I don't know if you guys have ever used that function where you can freeze the, uh, the, the plug-in so that you can get all of its effects. It's basically a bounce. Right. That. Yeah. So, um, and then I recorded my live guys right here. So I have live cello, live trumpet, live flugelhorn, which I, I decided to change his from trumpet to flugelhorn. I took both, but I really liked that one better. So mm -hmm. being creative, doing whatever you need to do, you know, and then you, and then you have it. So uh, this file here, by the way, the dialogue, the dialogue mix one is the one that I use to send out as a quick time movie. So what I do is I reroute the audio back in to my, to my session, and I'll go ahead and I'll bounce one file that has the balance I like of dialogue plus the, the mix file. So I basically am using this guy, but putting in the dialogue into this track. That take that movie, that range, go ahead and export as a QuickTime movie, 
and you basically have a movie that looks like the one we have there with everything in it for you already. Right. So it's great. I set up all those, have my clients look at it, they go, and then they can approve it straight from that. And it's a really simple way to do small chunks. You can do full acts, you can do the whole reel, but it's a, a easy function DP makes it really easy to right. do. Um, and then from that point, uh, I go ahead and I send it to my engineer, the stems that I'll create from these things. And then we go ahead and he bring, and then I, I mean, these were, these, are, these, these aren't normally in my session, but I brought them in for you guys. So it'll be here's the 5-1 mix, the stereo mix, and then I'll, I'll separate them out into different uh, stems. Therefore, if a filmmaker wants to lower something, put it, give it, you know, get rid of it, it's a little bit split out for them. You don't always want to necessarily give them too much control, right. but for this, it was it was easy. There weren't that many things going on, and he was going to basically use it. So, uh, anyway, so let's take a listen to a few things. Okay. Just check over here. Yeah, yeah, come on in. So, just a few things in this will be um, so you guys can check it out. One of the other things Matt and I were talking about before is the clippings. I don't know if you guys use a lot of clippings at all in any of your projects, but it's a really killer little window where you can pretty much put anything in. So, for example, you know, here's a little wind chime thing that I had here, uh, which I basically did it by, oh, okay, here's my, here's my wind chimes file I love. It's just basically a little audio snippet, and you just throw it on in, and there it is. So, all your little favorite things you love, Matt has something here where he had some presets of things like that. He can throw right into the mixing con window. Um, I even have one of my favorite little drum fills, because I'm, I'm a drummer, after all. And uh, one cool thing you can do is, like, say you want to go to your drum thing. I've got, a, like, a little lick that I like. Boom, there it is. So it's like, you know, but it, it's set the way I like to hear it. So great, great use of very quick, easy things to do. And right. you can share it across. So he creates his, he can give them to me, I can give them to him, mm -hmm. and we can use all the same stuff. It's just a really great way to work collaboratively. And um, we also yeah. can use that when it comes to actually uh, creating parts for the players. Yeah. I can either export a MIDI file or I can just drag a clipping of that performance in that window and you have it in there ready to go. Exactly. If you're, you know, you know however yeah. want to do it. Exactly. Uh, another great thing, if you guys don't already know, are key commands, key bindings, basically. Mm -hmm. Excellent way to create your own custom key set. That's a huge thing for you know all your favorite things. When I was working at, at uh, for, for Snuffy Walden, we used a lot of the F keys to do all of our favorite things, from change duration to um, you know anything you kind of went to a lot, quantize all that kind of stuff. Easy one key kind of things. You can set it up all here the way you like to set it up, and you can save those out. And say for example, like Matt's like, okay, I just want to be able to use what you do. How can I you know for for my thing. I just save it out. He can import them right in, and then he can use that as a new set, and then go back right back to his old set too, right. just by kind of choosing. So that's those are cool features which are really helpful. Just so you can guys can get a sense. Now what we were talking about about this uh, particular cue. So you heard what Matt had beforehand, and now uh, if we were to go to the full thing, you can see kind of what I did. Here's an example. So you know, I've got all these different elements here. I've got the live stuff. So I, had, I decided, do I want to do trumpet? Do I want to do flugel? You know, which, which ones are like live cellist is there? Just, you know, all re and by the way, recorded with an 828X and, and, a, and a good mic pre, and a good mic. I mean, the DP stuff sounds great. It's really, it goes in really, really well. It works obviously exceptionally well within its program. So I stay mostly all Motu for all my stuff because it's just, it's just like kind of turnkey for me. It's right. really easy. Um, okay, so you got the live stuff there. I'm like, great. Now I can decide how I want to do the whole thing. I play some guitars here. We, unfortunately, we don't have the plugs, so you can't hear with that vibe. But what I do have is the final mix. So you can kind of hear now what happened over there and another cool thing obviously if you guys haven't seen this is the bundles so you know there's your you can kind of set up buses and instrument patches in here if you haven't done that before all your routing uh, yeah. yeah all your routing which is great uh so once you take a look you see what we did here so here's matt's cue starting off it's all his stuff Live flugelhorn now. Live 
have cellos in. o'clock in the morning, Eli. What the hell are you doing? So there you, you go. A so a really, you know, just a simple way. I mean, this this doesn't take. I mean, like it's just really easy to work with. Right. Easy to go in. This is obviously a simple example of how this works. But it just see, it's like, I what I mean. Matt has what kind of guitar were you playing? On this, I think I was playing my Telecaster. So he's got a Tele, and I I played it. I think I played it on a my I think on a Strat. Oh, okay. But yeah. basically. Sounds sounds fine. We have the same plug, so it works yep. out great. You just so, pull it right yeah. up. So that's the beginning yeah. cue is my guitars. Joey takes over. Works pretty seamlessly. You can't really tell that we've yeah. changed thing, anything at all. Exactly. Point, so. And then, you know, another thing was I had to do a quick chart. Uh, and so what I, well, what I did is I took his trumpet MIDI. I went inside that guy. And I, uh, I basically quantized it to make it nice and clean. And then at that point, I can go ahead and I, and I can make... It's a simple chart. Put a little title in here, you know, using this window. I don't know if you guys use the quick the, the quick scribe much, but it actually, if you clean it up and get it inharmonically correct and things like that, a little bit of time actually works really great, and you can do a lot with it. So, you know, again, quick, easy chart, and then I, you can use everything and go in here. Sometimes I like to just go in afterwards and just pencil mark it and quickly give it to the musician. Um, but at least it's something there for them to follow, and it's it's you know it, it comes out really nice and clean. So another easy, quick feature that I think DP does pretty well too to get you going. So you've got that aspect of it, right? You know, yeah. So again, going back to this chunks feature, one of the nice things about this is it makes it really convenient to organize when we have multiple versions of the same cue, and that's something that happens all the time. Maybe you're getting changing picture, you're getting notes from the director or producers, and you have to make all this stuff organized in some way. And rather than have 30 individual sessions in your Finder window on your Mac or PC or whatever, yeah. you can have everything kind of organized all in this same sequence, utilizing the same templates, and it's just is really quick and easy to switch around. Um, and I think that's, that's, again, we kind of mentioned it earlier, but the, one of the biggest things that we love about DP, and it just makes it so quick and easy to do that. And in situations like this where we're collaborating, when Joey sends me, for example, his uh, you know, initial session that he starts, and I load it in, I load it into a separate chunk. So I'm not destroying what I've already done. I have, uh, in case something goes haywire, or I do something wrong, or import something that I don't want, and I need to do it again, I can just delete that chunk and start over again, and I always have my original idea intact. Another thing I really like to use a lot, and I'm not sure that Joey does as much, but is the mute tool, which is a newer feature in the last couple of versions. Yeah. And so that's one nice thing. Like a lot of times you're working on a queue, and here's all the basic MIDI information. Let's say that they like like these long legato lines, but when it gets into this like quicker piece, they're like, yeah, we want to hear that without the trumpet. It's really easy to just mute these in in these notes here, uh, and turn those off and I don't have to actually go in and re-record or redo anything. And the beauty of that is, is I remove this, and let's say that they say, oh, actually, we like it. We want it back in. I don't have to remember what I recorded and, and performed in necessarily. I can just go back in and unmute that selection. So it's pretty nice for, especially in situations where the client's maybe not sure what they want, and you're jumping back and forth between things. And I, for me, anyway, it's a very convenient tool. So I mean, to, to me, these are the kinds of things when, when I've asked DP, you know, hey, can we get this, can we get that? And they're very responsive, and, then, and they end up doing things like this, which is great. Great in particular for film composers, and, and great in a workflow setting like this where you just need something really quick and easy. These are some kind of key things I, I use a lot, right? So change velocity, change duration, change continuous data, another great one. But this guy here is really cool, uh, in particular, if you go to the move releases one. So. I like to do this one in particular. So say, for example, I'm trying to do a quick chart, or I want to do a horn patch. I'm, I'm playing a French horn line, and I don't want my samples to go over each other, because you may have something like this. Well, you can go ahead, you select them, and go ahead to change duration, move releases, and it'll 
go right to the edge. Mm -hmm. Great quick way. Also cleans up a lot of your quick scribe stuff too. Right. Which is so that so when I make a chart like that, for example, I'll go in and I'll just make sure I kind of quantize things and clean it up. A really quick way to do it. But a great feature. The other key feature that is one of my favorites as well is choosing a range. So when you when you go into the commands here, and you have these commands, I learned from when I was working at Snuffies to do the left arrow and the right arrow on the keyboard, I, we, you made to a region start and stop point. So if I chose, if I located bar one, and then I hit the left arrow, and then I located bar five, and hit the right arrow, it would highlight just that region. So I would be selecting that one region. That was one of my favorite little key commands that I put in there. And then from there, I could go ahead and I can uh, go to different you know, sections here and change those particular you know velocities that are in that range, whatever it might be. But there is a section here. I'm trying to remember because I have so many quickies. I got to find out where it is in the actual <laughs> right. menu. Uh, but um, and on that point, Joey yeah. and I use completely different key commands. So I was a Pro Tools Where's guy that? working at a audio, you know, a mu music recording studio at one point. They use a Pro Tools shop. I was familiar with Pro Tools quick keys. So when I started composing and realized that I, I wanted to get into a better situation for that and ended up using DP. I was able to import all the key commands from Pro Tools into DP, and I never had to like relearn where everything was. It was really quick and easy. Um, yeah. But you know, a lot of, uh, and some of it's a hybrid now. Some of it is, is quick keys that come standard with the program. Some I have customized the way I like it. And Joey and I operate kind of in different ways. I will oftentimes use mm -hmm. the zoom tools a lot and zoom in and out of areas I want to see. So I'll, I'm kind of, I guess, more analog in that way. I just want to zoom out, look where I want to go, and zoom in. Whereas Joey does a lot of the locating to certain measures. So it's just, you know, it's interesting how everybody uses it differently, but um, it's very flexible in that way. And it's, I've always felt like it just doesn't get in my way. I kind of can just. Um, be creative, and I'm not spending all my time thinking about the, the technology that's going on to, to do what I want to get done. So yeah, this is the change continue uh, yep. the ch change continuous data window. You want to take all of your volumes, perhaps when you have a uh, you know I can't see it I guess here, but when you if you want to show your volumes or your mods, you can take them all down at once by a scale to percentage. Another quick fast one that I love using. Also, I don't know if you guys know about event chasing and, and input filters, if you ever use that. Another great thing. You can actually choose what you want to see. This is what I like to see only in my thing. So I have all the controllers on and pitch bend and on. I don't usually like the off velocities. I just have the on velocities. And basically, it kind of looks like this. This is pretty much all I like to see. Um, that way, I don't have a bunch of stuff all over the place. It makes it nice and clean, mm -hmm. um, like, for example, right here. Or this is, so these are all on velocities. Um, and then if I were to go to a track, let's see here, that actually had uh, some volume written on it. So here's a pad. These guys right here. Here's my volume. Here's my mod for this particular patch. You know, that's what I'm saying. You select this, this region here. So what I do is I use the arrows normally, and it would basically input the, the region into it. And you can go ahead and then you can use some of these great things to be able to um, you know, change the velocities. I can, I can now go and I can scale back. Sorry, this is not the velocity I wanted. I wanted over here. I can change, I can select whatever I, I you know, if I, ch if I change all these guys, go here to the mod, and I can bring all the mod down. Controller one, scale it down. I use this one a lot, maybe by 80%. So it just goes down a little bit, but it groups it all together and yeah. keeps the wave from you have. And keeps the performance yeah. intact so as well, yeah. Show them the show only, the, the show only features that you can do as well. Oh, right you know here. What I'm talking about? Yeah. Right. So again, you want to do you want to do mod. Maybe you want to just look at your volume. Maybe you just want to look at one of the things only. That, that's another great one too. Don't yeah, I mean, I think that pretty much okay. covers most of our thoughts. Yeah. I mean, again, it's just it does make it very. Um, pretty seamless for us to work together when we're not in the same room, can't do these things together. The timelines don't allow for it on most projects. And so you have to find ways where you can quickly work together and share this information. And this has made it really easy to do that. Um, yeah. and, and really allows us to kind of work in our own way, but also work together and uh, without um, having to completely change the way that we like to operate individually.